to it just because they're peeing out the excess. Um, and, but it does, it usually, um, my babies usually start eating after that. Um, and that's on intake? You do the vitamin B on intake? On certain babies. If okay. they, if you get healthy batches of babies, like this one here, this one here got, got the vitamin B because he needed a little extra. Okay. Um, these guys get it. These guys did not have any of it because they were healthy. Even the babies I got from you were yeah. really healthy. And so, um, they didn't need it. Um, that's kind of one of those things. <laughs> and so, um, let's see. Okay, um, the other thing that I really like, um, and this is just my personal stuff, but I buy um, goat cream flakes and I also buy colostrum. Um, and it's all um, caprine, which is goat, because it's, it's technically closer and easier to digest. It's closer to kitten and cat milk. Um, it's easier to digest. Um, my colostrum, I'm a firm believer, this is like a lifesaver, um, and it, it, it's not, it's, it's good for these guys and stuff, but it's not, like we're past the 24 to 48 hours that it's going to actually absorb into the intestines and, you know, give them all the antibodies that they need, but colostrum has been proven to, um, help support the immune system, even in people, because that's what this is for, is for actually adults, and so it, it not only supports the immune system and stuff, um, it's high in antioxidants, antibodies, um, and so, and two, it's also extremely low in fat, and it's very high in protein, which is really, really easy for them to digest. Um, it tends to keep the weight on, and what I like the most about colostrum is it keeps the stools firm. Um, I add this in to baby's milk up until three, three weeks, even these guys are still on it. Um, it comes with a little tiny scooper, and for these guys here, so it's just real small, um, and I mix, for these guys right here, I mix up, mine probably, you know, a little over halfway on this, and they get one scoop of that at least once a day. Um, it, it keeps the, the stool soft and stuff into, I just think it helps them, but I keep everybody on that until at least three weeks. Um, it's not super expensive or anything. Um, I add the goat milk uh, cream flakes just for added fat. You have to blend these up because um, they're an actual flake. They, it's not a powder. And so, and you guys can come up and look all this later and stuff if you guys want, but um, I do. It adds just the calories. Um, and then two, it's really good to mask the flavor of different things if you want to put it into the bottle. So it just makes it creamier and a little bit fatter, higher, higher calorie content. Do you mix all that up as what, like a separate, or do you mix it in So I mix the colostrum too? separate, but whenever I'm doing my big batches of milk, that's mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and do this because it needs to be blended. Okay. And so, um, and I don't mix it with water first. I add this directly into my, my milk that's already, um, you know, made up. I'm trying to think what else did though. Um, my nipples. Um, I'm weird. I don't use the other nipples that come with regular bottles. I use these. These are were they, they originally came from Australia, but there's a company that is in Missouri, and they um, actually started making them and stuff and ordering them in. I like these. I've never had a baby turn these down. Um, these are super, super soft, and actually, if you order 10 of them, none of these nipples will be the same because they're all handmade. Um, they're only $2.75 a piece, so they're not super expensive. Um, they don't last as long as a regular nipple, but um, I'm a firm believer in them. I've used them, like I said, I've raised all sorts of baby animals, and this is my go-to nipple on everything, literally everything. Um, you have to cut a hole. Yeah. So you, yes, no. Right? So you actually do cut a hole, and um, and I can actually show you with a new nipple. But I actually don't cut them. I actually kind of poke it with a um, a knife, and if you just do the end of it, and then you kind of rip it off, it will make the most perfect tiny hole that you've ever seen. Um, but again, you can kind of see these where they're deteriorating and stuff, so they don't last as long, especially when you have fifteen kittens. Like they're they're not going to last that long. So I bought a new nipple. Um, I'll show two feeding on some of Linda's kittens here in a little while. Um, and then she also got in this um, colostrum supplement um, this year, and so I'm trying it. I'm mixing it in and stuff and kind of seeing it. And I actually gave this quite a bit to those five babies that were born last night because mom hasn't been the best. So we'll see. 
Um, What'd you think of that? How it, I liked it. It's it's just a gel. It's uh -huh. super easy to mix in. Um, this colostrum can get clumpy and stuff, um, so you actually have to put it in fairly warm milk and then mix it in really well, or um, you know, kind of get like a little whisk or something, and it will dissolve. But um, it does kind of settle, so each time I refill the bottle, you'll see me shaking stuff up off the bottom, and that's what I'm doing. And if I'm being weird and pouring it back and forth, that's what I'm doing. I'm remixing everything um, because stuff settles. Um, these guys here I have on Metro, uh, Metro Dinosaur. So um, that is one of my go-to antibiotics. It is not good for teeny tiny kittens. Um, Metro Dinosaur, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, and Linda actually has some right here that is mixed in with a little bit of wormer which is great because roundworms pass through the milk of the mama cats. And so if you have an outside kitty, your kids are going to have roundworms within the first 24 hours if they're born. But um, that will take care of everything. But the Metro, um, this one here I actually got from Linda. And she's got more in here, and I'm actually going to show you guys how to dose them and stuff. Um, he had severe, stinky, yucky just bacterial smelling and, and there's a real good distinct smell to it like you can't you can't deny that there's a difference in like and he was skinny right he was really yeah. skinny from that but yeah and, he was ready to go like a potent smell that you can smell from through the, the house they, it's just it kind of smells like it died and yeah so um uh, metro day on that and i've already got him cleared up and stuff but i do keep him on that and i'll keep him on it for five to seven days um He's getting funny about the bottle. Metro is extremely bitter. Even in adult yes. cats, they will foam and yes. throw it up. I mean, it is a, you'll see it. And so um, you mix very little into the bottle because they can taste it, or you can even just do a syringe. Um, but once they latch onto the bottle, it'll go down. Um, is that a prescription? Yes, that is. Or Linda. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. If, if you want, if you want to foster for us, you know, I'll, I'll get you some. <laughs> um, but it is, um, it's a really good. Um, it, it's for their tummies. That's that's what it is for. Um, it, it usually cures diarrhea um, if you have any type of ongoing yuck. That is, um, that's them. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, we can use baby gas drops and a lot of people. So on my preemies, um, you get preemies in, they'll have a lack of hair on the, the top of the feet and on the noses. Um, like their entire nose will be bald, their feet will be bald. Um, and most kittens do have a little bit of, you know, missing hair right here. But on preemies, you'll see that they their skin is just completely translucent and they will have like almost no fuzz right here on the tops of their feet and going up their faces. Um, and their, their coats are usually very, very thin. Um, so I use gas drops. I use it on these two because they're fussy babies. And since they didn't have colostrum, they're fussy and it's just hard to digest and they're not gaining weight the best. Um, I don't weigh my kittens unless they come in and sh you know, shape like this. 